Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Mix. I've got another fun Fusion 360 challenge for you today. And this one comes to us uh, in the form of another question. And it's by Ryan who asked me, well, he wrote in and said, I have most of all your courses. I think you're a great teacher and you come across very clear in your teaching style. So thanks, Ryan. Uh, I had a question, is there an easy way to model holes that are tangent in various places on the sphere? So here's what I came up with. And when I first read the question, I actually thought he meant two spheres that are tangent together. So I came up with this solution here where I have this bigger sphere and a smaller sphere. And as you can see, if I take that smaller sphere, I can move it around and it's always going to be tangent to this bigger sphere. Uh, but then I reread the question and I realized, oh, he actually said hole. So I made this other um, scenario here where you have a hole. And then you can see if I move that hole anywhere around, it's still tangent to this sphere in any location. So there's the challenge for you. Um, go ahead and try to recreate this. I think this is a great challenge in that it shows you the power of constraints in Fusion 360, giving you a little hint there. So pause the video and take a crack at this and then come back and I'll go over my solution. I'll start by creating a sphere. So I'll go to create and down to sphere. And normally I don't approach my designs by creating primitives. I like to start with sketches and base my models off of sketches. But I thought I'd just show you that there's that option here. So I'll go to Sphere, select a plane, and then start this at the origin. I'll drag this out and give it a diameter of 100 millimeters. Click OK. Now I'm going to create a sketch and I'll create it on that same ZX plane. I'll project this sphere into my sketch by hitting P, uh, selecting bodies as my selection filter and clicking my body here. Click OK. And now I've got this purple outline around my sphere there. So I'm going to untoggle bodies so I can just see that outline. I'm going to create another circle here on the side and I'll give this 30 millimeter diameter. Then I'm going to create a line. So L for a line and I'm going to go straight down, making sure I have that vertical constraint there. Now I'm going to use my midpoint constraint to constrain this line to the midpoint of this circle, or actually it brings the circle to the line. Uh, and then I'm going to hit T and trim, T for trim, trim the outer edges. Now I can hit escape and I can move this anywhere. Uh, but let's stop sketch for now and I'll bring bodies back into view and I'll create a revolve. So create revolve, select this hemisphere here and then I'm going to select that middle line has my axis to revolve around and I have my sphere there. Normally that's the way I would approach creating a sphere. Okay, so I have my two spheres and you can see they're clearly not tangent. So I'm going to go back to my sketch, go to edit sketch here. And all I'm going to do is just grab my tangent constraint here, which is this here. And I'm going to make this sphere tangent to this sphere here, or the circle tangent to that circle. Stop sketch. And there's my two spheres tangent to each other. And if I bring the sketch into view, you know, I can take this and just drag it anywhere. And we've got that first part there down. So this is now tangent to that sphere, no matter how I move it. All right, let's go ahead and, and create that hole and see how I would approach that. So I'm going to go back to that original sketch and edit it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll create a circle here, uh, give it that same diameter of 30 millimeters and then an L for a line to draw another line here and then apply that midpoint constraint between the line and the circle and then grab my trim tool to trim these edges and stop sketch. And let's just revolve that to create our sphere. So we'll select one side, our center point as our axis, click OK. All right, now if I go back to that sketch here, I'm going to edit the sketch. Instead of applying a tangent constraint between the smaller circle and the bigger circle, I'm going to apply a coincident constraint. And that coincident constraint is going to be between the center point and the outside of the circle here. So now you can see I can move this around. Let's untoggle bodies for a minute and it's always going to be tangent to that circle. So I'll stop sketch and we have a similar situation here where we have this circle now uh, tangent to this or this sphere tangent to this bigger sphere. 
But let's go ahead and apply a Boolean operation here. So we'll go to Combine, select the target body as the big sphere, tool body, small sphere, operation is cut, click OK. And now we have our hole there that we can move around and it will be tangent to our big sphere. So that's my quick solution to this problem. I hope you were able to learn something. Again, I think it really shows you the power of using constraints in Fusion 360. If you're not using them, play around with them and experiment. You'll really see how you can be so much more efficient with your designs. All right, if you have any questions on my approach, just leave it on the comments below. And if you had a different approach that you'd like to share, um, I'd also like to hear it. And I'm sure the rest of us watching would also like to hear it. So leave that as well on the comments comments and as always if you like the video hit that like button and subscribe because i'll be here every week with a new video for you so enjoy the rest of the week and i'll see you next week